Consider the sequence of machine instructions give, given below, a multiplication, a division, an addition and a subtraction instruction. R0 to R8 are general purpose registers. First register source the result of operation performed on second and third registers. So the first operand over here is the destination register and these two are the source operands and this is the case in each and every instruction. This sequence is to be executed in a pipeline instruction processor with four stages. Instruction fetch and decode, operand fetch, perform operation and write back the result. IF, OF and WB stages take one clock cycle each for any instruction. But the perform operation stage, it takes one clock cycle for add or sub instruction three clock cycles for mul instruction and five clock cycles for div instruction. And the processor uses operand forwarding from the perform operation to the operand fetch stage. So what will be the number of clock cycles taken for execution of instruction? Now there are four stages that each instruction has to go through. So first we have the mul instruction where we are having the instruction fetch and decode, operand fetch, perform operation. Now since this is a mul instruction, mul we know requires three clock cycles. So perform operation, perform operation, perform operation and then a write back. We know that instruction fetch, operand fetch and write back each requires one clock cycle only. Next comes the div instruction. Now we have to first see whether there is any data dependency between these two instructions. We see that there is none. So we start with the instruction fetch which will begin in the second clock cycle, then operand fetch. After the operand fetch is done, the, the perform operation stage is not available because it is still executing the mul instruction. So we will have to wait. Once the perform operation unit is free in clock cycle 6, now the perform operation unit can be given to the div instruction. And since this is a div instruction, it requires 5 clock cycles. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then we have the write back stage. Meantime, the add instruction has been brought and now we have to again see whether there is any data dependency or not. We see that there is a data dependency between this destination R6 and the source over here. So since this destination R6 will be written only in clock cycle 11, but it is also given that there is an operand forwarding from the PO stage to the operand fetch stage. That means once this result is available, division of R2 and R3 is available at the end of clock cycle 10, it can be forwarded to the operand fetch stage in the same clock cycle. And once it is available in the uh, clock cycle to the operand fetch stage, now the PO stage can start in clock cycle 11. So the add can be uh, go at the add instruction can go in the perform operation stage in the 11th clock cycle and followed by a write back clock cycle. Now comes the sub instruction. Again we see that whatever is the destination of the add instruction R7 that is a source operand over here. So again there is a data dependency. If we start with the instruction fetch in clock cycle 4 and we are in the operand fetch stage but the operand is not available because that will be available only at the end of clock cycle 11. So here is the time where we will be able to forward the operand from the PO stage to the OF stage and then PO or the perform operation can start in clock cycle 12. So since this is a sub instruction, perform operation will require only one clock cycle and then followed by a write back 
clock cycle. So the total number of clock cycles that will be required are 13.